So what languages do we use? We talked about natural language being a little bit blurry, but sometimes there is that, that can be used for simpler algorithms with, with clarity. Um, and if you decide to use natural language, make sure you're making sure you're precise, not in the way that was done earlier. Pseudocode is very common. This, this image shows both um, a flowchart, which is often used in, in, in early, we're not teaching flowcharting here, but it's often used to, for some folks to, to be able to decide, because visualizing, they see the code flows in different angles, so geometrically, flowcharts are useful to kind of geometrically represent where, where the current active line of code is, right? Um, we talked about pseudocode being a very common way. Well, do this, it's just kind of the English way of doing it, but a little more precise than just general English. And visual and textual programming language. You know about a visual language, SNAP, text programming languages are very, very common, almost more common than visual languages. Java, C, Python, et cetera, are examples of early languages taught to introduction students, introductory students that can be used on a computer. But in general, there could be another way. There's a thing, an idea called data flow, which is how the data should flow, which is different than flow charts, but it's how the data should flow, not how the logic flows, but how the data should flow. It splits, this guy does a, uh, does a, it's often used in image processing. So the image comes in and splits, and this does, does a grayscale, this is an edge detector, they merge together, and so it's kind of a powerful thing. We also use it in rendering, where we have different channels for these things. So very, there's not a single rule for these, but you have to be very precise, that's the idea of this. When you're comparing what an algorithm is versus what a function is, or a procedure, remember functions are the guys that return the values, procedures are the more general class of things that are blocks, any blocks in general procedures. Algorithms are kind of the purity, the pure version of it. It is the idea of the concept of doing something. But you embed it in a programming language. So the programming language is how you embed it. So don't confuse the two. Although you can specify an algorithm in a language because you, know, you just pull away the syntax of the code. What are they really doing? That's essentially coding the algorithm too. So there's some part of that for both of that. So the example I gave is um, find max in a list. And there's the algorithm for doing that. Set a temporary variable. Remember, we're not, this is language independent. Set a temporary variable max to be the first element of the list. Go through all the elements, is what it says here. Go through all the elements of the list, comparing your temporary best so far with every element. When the, every element you're grabbing is bigger, trying to find the max in the list, than your temp so far, make temp so far that element. Keep doing that. When you're all done, return the temp so far, the max so far. That'll be your max in the list. That's a valid algorithm said in natural language. That was no, that was my really pseudocode. It was kind of pseudocoding natural language. I've embedded that now, embodied that into snap. So the code on the right, the bottom right you'll see is the example of snap doing exactly that. Um, and it's essentially one-to-one -one mapping of one of the things I said, which is kind of cool. But you might recognize it. I had to introduce a script variable, which was fine, but it's essentially it's the same algorithm. So the programming language and the, and the function is how you embody the algorithm. The algorithm is, is in purest sense. It's kind of the before it gets embodied in a corporal form. Okay? Which language do you choose, though? Right? We're now deciding we're talking about expressibility. And there's a lot of things about different languages. So you, you saw with the different programming paradigms we saw in the last lecture, that different languages are better suited for different algorithms. You know, if you have a very logic-based problem, you might want to go with a declarative language. If you have a recipe-like problem, you might want to go with an imperative or sequential language. If you have a, function, a problem that kind of can be broken down into functions of functions of functions, maybe you want to go with a functional language. Maybe it's about agents and things, and sort of a simulation. Maybe an object-oriented language might work with that. Okay, it's a kind of category of languages. Some programming languages, boy, the beautiful thing is there aren't just five or 10. People, there are classes where, each student makes up their own programming language. It's kind of cool. So programming languages are often custom-built for a particular domain. And oftentimes, if you are in that domain, why well, I want to think about frogs and the life cycle of frogs. There might be an algorithm. There might be a language that lets you specify you know, a simulation about frogs in a way that's just really clean and just falls out naturally based on what they're trying to simulate. Okay? So you have custom languages, and often these specific domains it, it, it makes sense to be coding in that language rather than try to write in Snap about this other domain. Write in a language meant for that particular domain. And the language you choose can affect characteristics such as clarity and readability. Sometimes we saw the natural language version of go get the loaves of bread be very ambiguous. So clarity is really critical, that it's clear what you're asking me to do. Readability says how easy is it for me to write it and then hand it to another, some other, someone else to be able to read and say, oh, I get it. That's what you were trying to do. And oftentimes, you have a lang languages. For example, I could ask you to write in assembly language, which are very, very low-level hardware descriptions. And reading the algorithm from that is so non-readable. My goodness. It's, it's all about how you move data literally. It's all, more, all about the how and less about the what, right? 
We talked about the what versus the how. If you can get to the how, it's like, that's what you want me to do. Sorry, more about the what you want me to do, but less about the how. So the, the, the low-level language is all about the how to do it, right? It's about move the data from here to here, copy a, a, a memory location to low level. I want a higher level of abstraction, exactly. So that's where abstraction comes. You want a higher level language to be able to see. Higher level languages are almost universally easy to read and more, have more readability. And when you're deciding a language, clarity and readability are critical for deciding a language you should choose, OK? So final slide on this. Here are examples of four different languages, four different kind of characterizations of languages. These aren't necessarily the four different paradigms, but here are four different kind of characterizations of languages that, and why you choose those. The upper left, you'll see C and C++. These are low-level languages, and they're really, really fast. Um, Java and C Sharp are languages over here in the top right, are languages for portability. I write it once, and I can bring it to any system, a Mac, a PC, a mobile device. Very easy to, to translate that without having to recode it in another, in another form. Python, Perl, and TK are languages that are really easy, small and short, not necessarily high performance languages, but really fun and easy and interactive to, to write. So the development cycle is very fast for those languages. You may not have heard of any of these. This is totally fine. Just throwing these out there as names if you happen to hear of, of them. And Scratch and Snap, as you know, are favorite languages for teaching introductory students to program. And all these are powerful. Now, here's the bottom, the bottom line before we end this slide, which is that nearly all programming languages are equivalent in terms of being able to express any algorithm. So you have some idea, you want to be able to embody it, all of these that I'm listing here will work. I'm not saying all languages are equal powerful. We're going to learn about that in the next, set of, set of, next lecture. But in terms of the, le the languages shown here, nearly all of them are equally powerful. And that's a really big idea you're going to learn from that. So these on this slide are all equally powerful to be able to take any algorithm you want and embody into those four guys. Okay? We'll see you at the next lecture.